Thanks, Scott. And I want to welcome everyone here today. And uh, if people want to come in and grab their seat, we can get started straight away. I want to say that this is a real pleasure for me to be back in Washington, D.C. This is my third winter meeting as a governor, and I'm honored to be able to have the opportunity to kick off this Hot Topics session. I want to thank my colleagues from around the country who are finding their way back to the table here for joining me this morning. Uh, this session is going to consist of four TED-like talks and presentations. We're going to be covering everything from civic engagement to the National Infrastructure Bank to state successes and artificial intelligence in the labor market. These are pressing issues for all the governors and all the states and as citizens, as Republicans, as Democrats. These are issues we need to pay close attention to in 2017 if we aren't already. The presentations are designed to introduce information in a unique way, provide food for thought, and give ideas that we can take home and add value in our own states, all with a forward focus on the future. I'm going to kick it off, and uh, I've got the privilege this morning to talk about the importance of civics education in our country. There's a saying among governors that you always remember your first bill that you sign into law. <laughs> For me, it was the American Civics Act. It was the first law we signed in Arizona, and we were the first in the nation to do it. It's something we're proud of. It fulfilled a campaign promise, and that's something that people in this room are very good at. It also satisfied a really urgent need in our educational system. How many things do you have in front of you in this divisive political environment that can pass with bipartisan, popular, and wide support? The American Civics Act is one of those. And it will ensure that all of our students graduate from high school with a basic understanding of our nation's history and guiding principles. Arizona's own Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman to serve on the United States Supreme Court, called this a quiet crisis in education, and it's something I felt compelled to address. Today, 15 states, red and blue, have passed similar measures, and we may be looking at 16 very soon, because Governor Asa Hutchinson, as you know, just last week, the Arkansas House passed their version of the Civics Act by a landslide 81 to 4 vote. We're excited now that the bill is on its way to the Senate and encouraged that it will reach the governor's desk for signature very soon. Now I want to ask you to direct your eyes to the screen so I can show you a short video highlighting our efforts and hopefully encourage all of you to bring this idea back to your own state. The educated citizen knows how much more there is to know. And one small step Only an educated and informed people will be a free people. Let's start with some basics. More attention to American history and a greater emphasis on civic ritual. If we forget what we did, we won't know who we are. The ignorance of one voter in a democracy impairs the security of all. It's clear that the future of our country depends on active and engaged citizens. But today, many Americans can't even name one branch of our federal government. Without a general knowledge of civics, people are deprived of the opportunity to affect positive change in their communities. Their opinions and ideas matter and our country loses out when they go unheard. The Civic Education Initiative is an effort to ensure that all 50 states have a graduation requirement that students must pass the same civics test that all new Americans take. This 100 question test provides schools maximum flexibility to implement it in the way that works best for them. 
Unlike standardized tests, student performance cannot negatively impact schools' funding, teacher salaries, or job security. This common sense legislation has been passed and proposed in states across our nation. I'm proud that Arizona was the first state in the country to require a civics test. In fact, it was the very first bill I signed as governor. This important initiative is a first step towards a more engaged and civically minded youth. As educators, we prepare students for life. By putting civics on a statewide assessment, we are showing our students that knowing how government functions is as important as math, science, or English. So many people aren't aware, let alone engage in the issues, because they don't understand basic civics. Our generation needs to understand the structure of our government. This initiative was so easy to implement because the teachers and study materials were already in place. This is not like other tests that require major funding and resources from the state. The test is free, the study materials are free, and it is easily accessible online. To become a citizen, I had to pass a civics test. When I became a citizen, I was very emotional. Um, it was something that I had decided for a long time. And it did not come easy. It took a lot of time and a lot of sacrifice, but it felt like this country was finally my home. How can we expect new Americans to know this information and not our grade school and high school kids upon graduation from an American public high school? From my experience, when my students know that something is on a test, they pay attention. This is the first step to help our students to have a basic understanding of civics. If you're going to be involved in a community, you need to understand the levers of power and how you can move things forward. It's a great way for our schools to produce more active, engaged, and knowledgeable citizens. This is the kind of legislation we can all get behind. Protect our nation's future by creating active, engaged citizens, by ensuring America's high school students understand how their government works. Let's pass the Civics Education Initiative in every state. I want to give a big thanks to everyone that was involved in that video and for helping us spread the word on this great idea. And I especially want to thank Governor Jay Nixon, the former governor of Missouri. I think it is a testament to the strength of this organization. When I came in as a new governor, there was a class for new governors, and it was Governor Nixon from Missouri that was one of the instructors. And I called him up and asked him to be the co-chair and champion on this national bipartisan effort, and he was an easy Yes, so I'm grateful for that. And while I'm on the subject of recognizing leadership, I also want to express my gratitude to Norm McClellan and Foster Fries for their commitment to this program, and they are both with us today. It's because of their generous philanthropy and dedication to this issue that has raised this discussion from the state level to now a national level. So thank you very much. And, and as I mentioned before, in this political environment, civic engagement is a bipartisan issue. And I'm proud to stand <clears throat> shoulder to shoulder with the individuals who bring action to this vital cause. Now, as some of you know, I don't come from a traditional political background. Ten years ago, I was running an ice cream company called Cold Stone Creamery. And let me tell you, you get a lot of undeserved popularity when you're selling ice cream. <laughs> I want to assure you that that all goes away when you balance your first budget. <laughs> and it wasn't until I sold Cold Stone in 2007 that I first got involved in elective politics. That's when I really started to pay more attention to what was happening in government, and I wasn't happy with the direction that things were headed. I decided I wanted to do something about it and public a good place to get started. In 2010, I ran for state treasurer in Arizona. But as I started my campaign, I realized I was spending an inordinate amount of time to have to explain to business leaders in the state of Arizona that the office of state treasurer was an elected office. I even had one business leader that many people would recognize his name in the state of Arizona who said, oh, you don't have to run for that office. I can get you appointed to it. You know, that just wasn't factual. 
I want you to think back on your own years campaigning, and I'm sure you had to explain basic principles of governing and civics to voters in your state. So four years later, when I was elected governor of Arizona, I made the American Civics Act an important part of my education platform. And it's just as we saw in the video, this idea is simple. All graduating seniors must be able to pass the same test required of a new United States citizen. This is common sense, and I think it's more crucial and important to healthy political debate than ever. It was John Adams who once said, children should be educated and instructed in the principles of freedom. And I think that's something we can all agree on. How can we expect our children to protect the principles on which this country was founded if they don't even know what those principles are? We talk a lot about how important it is to vote, to be a good citizen, to get involved in public service. We tell young people it's your civic duty, it's your responsibility. And yet after every election we are disheartened by low youth voter turnout. We expect them to do their part, but I would challenge all the governors here, have we all done our part? That's why this past election, we saw that only 59% of eligible voters actually cast a ballot. Meanwhile, as Governor Nixon mentioned in the video, numerous studies and surveys show that a majority of Americans lack the basic understanding of how our country was founded, how it's governed, and what it means, and what the responsibilities are of a citizen. The statistics are alarming. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, only 9% of fourth graders can identify a picture of Abraham Lincoln and tell us two things he did that were important. Just 7% of eighth graders could correctly identify the three branches of government. And overall, only 24% of high school seniors scored proficient or above on the NAEP civics test. In general, interest and proficiency in basic traditional civics is declining. In a December 2014 survey, survey only 37% of adults said it was important to be informed about public issues, down from 56% in 1984. The picture is even more grim for young citizens. The voting rate of the millennial age group dropped from 51% in 1964 to 38% in 2012. And more recently, only 16% of this age group said that they trust government. When people do not understand the system by which they are governed, including how they affect change in that system, they are naturally going to be frustrated, and too often this leads to them disengaging from the political process. The American Civics Act addresses this, and it begins with all of us in this room. This is something we can touch all of our high school students with across the country. Because as I like to say, it's cute when a five-year-old doesn't know who the President of the United States is. But when 10% of our college graduates believe that Judge Judy sits on the Supreme Court, <laughs> it's just not that funny. So let me give you a feel for what some of the questions are on the American Civics Test. What country did we fight in the Revolutionary War? When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? Who makes the laws in the United States? And what are the first 10 amendments to the Constitution called? These are not 
difficult questions. And these are questions that every student should be able to answer before graduating high school. I think when we were growing up, we don't even remember where or when we were taught these things. They were with our coaches and our scout masters and our teachers and uh, in our neighborhoods. But today, unfortunately, the statistics tell the story. Too many of our kids do not know the answers to these questions. But it's not all bad news because like any national crisis, we have some wonderful people that have stepped up and organizations all over this country to find a solution. And one of those organizations is the Joe Foss Institute. And I really got this idea at a Joe Foss Institute dinner. They had Richard Dreyfus speaking at this dinner. They said they disagreed on, on every issue under the sun. But the only issue that they had 100% agreement on was the American Civics Act. And it was the way that they had a healthy, respectful, <coughs> and civil debate on the direction they wanted to see the country go. Like I said, there aren't many issues that as a governor, and when I was running for office, I adopted this the next day, would get spontaneous applause when I said we were going to bring this back to American high schools. And the Joe Foss Institute had a model bill. So I want to take a brief moment to briefly recognize one of the biggest champions of this effort, my friend, Dr. Lu Dr. Lucian Spataro. Now, Lucian had planned on being here, but sadly, a death in his family has rerouted him back to Ohio to be with, with loved ones during this difficult time. Our condolences and prayers are with the Spataro family. And while we're looking forward to hearing from Lucian today, I'm excited that Karen Summers is here to speak for him and on his behalf for the Joe Foss Institute. So will everyone join me in giving a very warm welcome to the stage to the Vice President and Director of Communications of JFI, Karen Summers. Thanks, Karen.